Hello and thank you so much for joining us on the brand new episode of the program. It's Spot Pizza, of course, you know, is the biggest, the boldest, and where you get the absolute best in the ever exciting world of sports. My name is Brownson Uwana, your host, and I must assure you that the program today is well loaded for your viewing pleasure. Lots of things making the rounds, the African Women Championship. Now, it's no more news that the Falcons have qualified to the World Cup. And um, the future awaits, uh, that, that there's another future for Cameroon and Tunisia. Of course, they picked a longer route to be going uh, for the playoffs. We're giving you all the things, all the form on that. Now, it was drama all the way in the Nigerian Professional Football League final day. Uh, I mean, MPFL drama, drama it was. And um, guaranteed, Kano Pillars fought hard but wasn't good enough as they've been relegated to the lower division of the league. And of course, lots of stories in the transfer market. Nigerian players are not left out. We'll be giving you all the details on that. And of course, if you are um, a fan of track and field, Fraser Prize makes our story today. But first, we'll take a very quick break. When we come back, we serve you all the details. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, it's, it's not a very happy moment for most football fans in Nigeria. And um, I mean, for some of us, it was very hard to close our eyes for sleep uh, because look at how Super Falcons lost out of the African Women's Championship, left, um, I mean, very little to desire. But I mean, that's football. You win some, you lose some. And it also cast doubt for the need of a foreign coach for the Super Eagles. Because, I mean, if 90% of our trophies have been won by a homegrown coach, now you, you want to question why a foreigner um, couldn't uh, win that. But of course, joining me this time is my strike partner, Lakule Philip. Uh, you'll be putting flesh <laughs> into some of this. Kule, not a very happy moment uh, for us. Welcome, by the way, yeah, um, to the program. Yeah, thank you very much, Bronson. It's good to be here. Now, uh, not a very happy moment for our football. Uh, Falcons, uh, we saw the signs coming when they lost to South Africa in their first game. Yeah, even though their other group game, they, you know, they, 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 won, they, they yeah. showed some level of class. But again, you meet a host nation. I, I think they were carried away by the home crowd. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the things that actually affected them, we've been talking about this, the Super Falcons that we saw there are not as strong as um, the previous teams we've watched. And uh, it's not even about the players right now. We've got some players... Uh, the coach chooses to place the players he wishes why we have some good, good players uh, on the bench. And, you know, uh, some of us before, after the appointment of uh, one trough, a lot of us have uh, had a reservation because we question the rationale behind his, uh, his employment. Is a coach who happens to have coached uh, some colleges in the United States of America. It's not proven. Bronson, when you look at the, 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 the Moroccan coach, is a coach who has won the UEFA Champions League with, with Leon in the past. Mm. So what is the rationale? Why bring in, why bring a, a coach, a college coach, to come and, and do a national team? And we have some top, top players, some top, top coaches, our ex-internationals, uh, who have won the, 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 the tournament without much stress. I don't seem to understand some of the times when the NFL does some things, you begin to wonder if they're actually technocrats as they call themselves. So for me, it's really a very disappointing one. It's not about the players. It's not about, uh, it is not the players that will make the selection. Mm. We have it's a, a coach, we, yeah. It's a coach. We have some, some players at the start of the tournament. We had, uh, 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 I can't remember the name of this midfielder right now, uh, Rita, um, Rita, Rita Chukwelu, yes. who was in time, was, was playing in the middle. Rita Chukwelu has been there for more than a decade. Come on, Brownson. The young woman, I mean, the woman is too old. But don't, yeah. Not forgetting uh, the, the captain of the side, Ono Maybe. Ono Maybe is 39 years, Brownson. If she's 39, and you could see the way, though she came back as uh, strong in the, in the uh, other games, but against South Africa, she was, she was caught off guard so many times, and the, her pace, uh, she doesn't have that pace. The, the coach of South Africa understood uh, that, uh, you know, the, 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 the woman, I mean, talking about A.B., it's not pacey anymore. So they try to, you know, put the ball on the run so that she will be able to, she will be found one, she will be able to, uh, she, the speed is mm. not there anymore. And that is what the coach of Morocco also capitalized on. Looking at some of our players, some players we have in the bench, even our signature Hali, mm. it's and, and, as, that... as a matter of fact, Kule, for me, I was more worried about the midfield. Now, um, in the quarterfinals, we saw that the link-up play from the midfield to the strike 
um, department. Yeah, I mean, it was it wasn't working, and the coach could not make changes to that effect. To I mean, the strikers were basically dropping so deep to get the balls. Now, in 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 the semi-finals, I mean, you have just two games to win the title, and we we we're, we're having same. Sometimes I wonder if these coaches don't see what we see from the TV screen. I mean, if, if you're watching from from the pitch, you should you should see some of this fault. So I, I think the Falcons, this Falcons team. Um, have a bigger problem. One of the things you've mentioned, age is, is catching up with this team. And then you look at and our Brazil, league. We have some young, young players on the bench. Even in the league, the coach just chooses to play whichever. And you know, it's it, you can't. It's, I think some of these coaches are quite stubborn. They they stick to their decisions, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. They are in charge. So I think that uh, uh, even if we, if you had won this tournament, I I I I, I don't know. I, I expect. The NFL to have sacked him, even if he had won this tournament, because he has not given us what we wanted. The present cup of the Super Falcons, Bronson, let me tell you, uh, the, 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 uh, the striker for the Super Falcons, talking about Ashita Ajibade, presently is one of the most, is the best midfielders for Atletico Madrid as we speak. Sometimes mm -hmm. she plays in the front, sometimes she plays from the, uh, from the mid, middle of the pack. And players like Tembi, the, the captain for the super uh, for the Bayana Bayana who was injured who is injured and mm. you know we're going to be missing the tournament right now missing it rather so I think that uh, a lot of things has to be done we have um, good or uh, players who are young who are faster who are pacey who are hungry for 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 uh, silver waist than some of these uh, tired legs that we have in the super Falcon. so I think right now the I think it, the coach should just uh, pack his bag bag and luggages. <laughs> and go back to the United States of America. We need a proven coach. We need a coach. If you can, we have coaches like Florence or McBaby. We have Ukeria there, Uche Ukeria. These are, you know, uh, coaches that have won the African Women Championship before. So mm -hmm. why, why are you bringing a coach, a secondary school coach, to come and handle, a college coach to come and handle the Super Falcons? If you're not getting a local coach, we don't, if you can't have play coaches like Florence or McBaby who played the game, won the tournament in the past, then we need a proving coach like the Moroccan coach. Yeah, all right. I'm sure the NFF, uh, I mean, for, for Super Eagles, we, uh, we started the campaign. And then, of course, uh, General uh, got the boots. But uh, for me, I, I, feel, I feel it's the early days for the Falcons for us to start calling for the sack of the coach. But, it's not, it's uh, the, you know, maybe, maybe one more tournament would, would, would make us see if, uh, you know, Francis, sometimes... One, one more so, tournament. We're going to the World Cup. You, this same coach should take us to the World Cup? Let, let, let's see what happens, Kule. I mean, um, <laughs> time would tell uh, if... That would happen or not. And now to the Nigerian Professional Football League. It was drama all the way. And um, I mean, looking at the table, I was shocked that the Canada United uh, didn't just finish on the 16th position. They rose all the way to 14th position. And uh, of course, uh, it, it was just good enough to give them the title. Now, I'm not going to look at the result. I'm just going to stick with the table. Now, as a stand or uh, as the table ended, uh, we have Rivers United, of course, they were crowned champions two weeks ago, and, and they will also be going to the CAF Champions League. Now, Plateau United finished second on the table with uh, 67 points, um, 10 points behind the leaders, uh, talking about Rivers United, and they will also be representing Nigeria in the CAF Champions League. Now, Remo Stars, don't forget, gained promotion not long ago. Uh, they did very well, had a very fantastic season. They will also be going to the continent, and of course, Remo Stars. Uh, we'll play in CAF Confederation Cup. Kuala United, Rangers International, Nasarawa United, Eimba finished um, on the seventh position, Gombe United, Aqua United, and of course, Wiki Tories makes up the top 10 team. Kule. Let's look at the top 10 team first. Um, were there any surprises with the way the team ended in the top 10? Yeah, there were surprises. Uh, Eimba, for me, didn't do well. George uh, Finiti. Uh, the performance. I think some people are just of the opinion that uh, Josh Finney should uh, just concentrate on the job of the Super Eagles. He's the head coach of the uh, <laughs> Super Eagles, so he should concentrate on that because uh, the result he has thrown out leaves much to be desired. Uh, we are aimed at the people's elephant are regarded as regarded. So, sorry, as sorry, sorry, just, sorry I'm, I'm not trying to make you lose your thought, but I mean, if, if Finney did not deliver with, at the club level, is it Super Eagles is going to deliver? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, those are some of the things that we wonder, you know, most of the time, it's not about the performance or antecedent of the individual, I think it's just about who is selected, that is what we get to see happening regularly in almost all spheres of things 
in our country right now. If you ask me, I think George Finidi is not qualified uh, to be the coach of the Super Eagles. Uh, someone who has not, who is not tested, who just uh, got, came into coaching uh, not long ago, uh, his biggest assignment so far but, has but, been... But, but we need to, uh, we need to him, encourage uh, our ex-international. We need to encourage them, but uh, the performance, he has thrown down, leave much to be desired. Uh, people expect Ayimba to always be at the top. Uh, uh, with all due respect to the teams that have been representing us in the CAF Champions League, uh, the CAF Confederations Cup, like you said, Plato United, um, Remo Stars, and also the team, the four team that will be representing us in the Confederations Cup uh, will be the team that wins uh, the uh, Federations Cup. That will be coming up uh, much later. But uh, Eiba, for me, is the biggest surprise of uh, the 2021-2022 season. In seventh because position. Coming, coming seventh, I mean, uh, leave much to be desired. Of course. Uh, Rangers International fifth, for me, made up one of my surprise team. Acquired United last season looked like a, a team on fire. But, I mean, uh, look at their current standing uh, where they ended the season with a minus one goal. Um, you, you will say that they didn't, have, they didn't have a very good season. Now, let's look at the other uh, bottom ten of the team. At the 11th position, we have Sunshine Stars, Niger Tornadoes, Abia United, Dakara United. And then we have Lobby Stars, Shooting Stars, all um, are safe. Now, the relegated team, we have Katsina United. It's so shocking that Heartland and Kano Pillars are in this list, Kunle. Um, I, you know, I, I'm still trying to come to the realization or to the reality that Heartland and Pillars will be playing in the lower division next season. Heartland has been on and off uh, this season. They come, uh, post good performances, and the following season, uh, they, they, they don't do well. I think it has to do with... Um, the administration of that club. The club is a very is, is one of the most respected clubs in the uh, Nigerian professional football league. But uh, uh, organization wise, uh, they've been having challenges. Even uh, the coach of the the uh, the former coach of uh, MFM, who actually took them or who, who was in charge of the team at some point, talking about Kamara, your fellow Sile Chuku, he didn't get to complain, but. We knew that there were issues because sign of play, sign on of players was a big challenge, and also the fact that most of these players uh, were not getting to be paid; their salaries were not paid uh, regularly. So that really took its adverse effect uh, on that team. Cano Pillars, the same is together. Their biggest one doing this season has to be their fans. I think uh, there's not been a good sensation uh, between the management of the club and their supporters. The supporters are always running riot. They are fierce. They don't ever want their team to lose. And then in the game of football, you win some and you lose some. And then one of the rules also stipulates that you don't beat the court referees mm. or the opposition uh, personnel uh, probably when you lose a game or the decision doesn't favor you. So this thing, this thing, this thing, found one see, thing. This thing shouldn't be even said on TV <laughs> or anywhere that you lose a game, you, watch, you beat, you beat you coach, you beat, you, uh, sorry, you, you beat referee, you beat fans. This thing shouldn't be said. When they came to Lagos, we, we were at, uh, uh, it was a MFM ground, mm. and then um, they, they played a game, I think it was against MFM. There was, no, what, I can't even remember the game they, they played some years ago. And when they were losing, even one of their players, one of their oldest players, was the one that, the cause of the, 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 the riot there. The fans were running riot. They were ready to fight with anybody. They challenged everything, and everyone had to run for cover. To avoid um, all, all forms of uh, trouble, so these are things that we really need to they need, really need to address. Because if you look at now, the three points that was deducted from them really affected them. If the three points were not deducted, they defeated shooting stars, uh, I think by three goals to one. And if that should have worked for them, because what because what they needed at that time before you would have been forty eight points. Yes, be forty eight points. Forty eight points. They maybe, maybe, shooting by two goes to one. Maybe the goal difference would have been the difference. Would have been the difference. <clears throat> but um, you no, know, they, because they, of they, the three, they, they would have still been relegated. Because no, Brownson, three points. The three points that was deducted. Yeah. So three points. If you plus the three points, yes, it would have been forty eight points. It would have been and, 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 and they're already on minus four. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I, they will have, have, yeah. have, have pulled through. Have they, will have, yes. they will have survived. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it's just so unfortunate for them because uh, they play the fans. Um, they, they are not sensitized and they are always causing them all forms of trouble. But could I must tell you, for next season, for next season, uh, I mean, not just next season, going forward. I, you know, I, I, want, I want a country or a league where I can take my son, I can buy a ticket, we can get some popcorn, 
sit, you know, sit, sit down, watch beautiful game of football. I think most families, just like me, want to have that. I mean, if you go to England and every other country, this is what that, that's how they relax during the weekend. Yeah, they you really go with your, understand. You go with your spouse, go with your, you know, with your partner. You sit down and enjoy football. I think we need to get our football to that point where, you know, for instance, uh, you know, people can just come out and mass in their numbers to enjoy a game of football whether you win or lose. Yeah, the NMC really has a lot to do. Well, this season, uh, there are a lot of uh, shortcomings, but uh, for next season, it can be better. It's, uh, it, it must be better, in my opinion, not can. Uh, can is suggestive. I, I think it should be better because we want the, the best for our league. And then at, at least for now, we still have hope and confidence in the league management company. At this point, it's a good place to take a break. We'll be back with more stories. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, let's talk about some transfer stories. I know some football fans out there are wondering uh, which player is going where. And um, some clubs seem to be very busy and some are just watching. At least for the season, Arsenal is not sit down look. <laughs> they are also very busy uh, bringing some top players into the club side. But let's start with some few Nigerian players. Calvin Bassi um, report to Ajax. Uh, I, I think that deal is a fantastic deal. Uh, he's just going to join the, the, the ranks of Nigerian players who have played in Ajax, the likes of Kano Wankwa, George Finidi, and um, Tijani Babangida. Yes, I'm so delighted about it. Uh, I think the young man really deserves it. Uh, looking at his performance, how he has breaked into a uh, prominence and uh, his performance the last two seasons has been absolutely breathtaking. And uh, uh, going to Ajax uh, is a good one for me because we have some other clubs who are also willing to secure his services. It was a big battle between Brighton and then Ajax of Amsterdam. But when we have Brighton <laughs> and you have Ajax, where, who do you pitch your tent with for a club who will be participating in the UEFA Champions League uh, for the Are you sure of winning titles? Yeah, sure of winning titles. Uh, Ajax are, are perennial achievers. Mm. Uh, any day, any time, you are always sure that uh, they, are, they will always be, they will always churn out uh, trophies in the uh, Dutch League. So, it's a good one. It's a welcome development. And then um, we hope to see him uh, play very well for Ajax and from Ajax Go to other bigger clubs. All right, let's see how well that goes for him. Now, Chidera UK has um, gone on loan to a German club, Hector Berlin. Uh, I mean, uh, for me, as the top flight club, it's a very good experience. It's going to be a very good experience for him. Yeah, it's going to be a good experience. Uh, you, are, you are going from the Russian League to the German Bundesliga, and it's not as though Arte Berlin plays in the, uh, the Division 2. Yeah. Uh, they are right there in the German Bundesliga. So uh, uh, it's a very good one. It's also uh, it's going to help and improve his career as a player. I have my reservations about why this young man don't get, don't get called up after the national team because he's got great potentials. I watch him play, watch his uh, dexterous moves, his scintillating moves, and uh, I hope he's able to reenact the form as CSK Moscow down, I mean, right there at Atapelli. Now, uh, we need to also understand that Nigeria has lots of talent, big players, big, big players all over everywhere. So, all these guys cannot play at, uh, at the same time. same time. But let's see, the coach still has lots of options. Don't forget, the coach is still going to bring his own discovery into the team. Absolutely. So, let's hope that HGK falls into those new category of players that will be coming. Now, Lukaku has returned back to Inter Milan, but that's not the story. <laughs> Lukaku, uh, I mean, his statement for me caught my attention saying that he regretted ever going back to Chelsea. Now, uh, I mean, if you, if you observe last season, wasn't really a choice for Tuchel. Most time he comes in. For me, I felt he scored lots of good goals for Chelsea, but I still don't do understand why Tuchel didn't use him. Brownson has scored a lot of goals, and in some games, is anonymous. I think uh, Tuchel, uh, if he didn't like him, he wouldn't play him. I remember one of those games he played against Arsenal. His debut game, I think. Yeah, he got a brace. He got. He was. He got a goal, and also it was. A, it was. It turned in the flesh of the Arsenal uh, defense. All through the game. And we thought that it was going to sustain the momentum. And suddenly, he, he, he became anonymous when he has chance. He scored at Do you expect the coach to continue to play him even when he's not getting in the goals? And the coach felt that if the coach has his faith in you, he keeps playing you. And you don't deliver. At some point, some coaching will stop playing you. And that was exactly what happened. And he felt that he deserves to always play on a regular basis. Come on, if you don't deliver, <laughs> you can't, you can't, you, you'll be wasting that, that spot. So, uh, coming up to say he regrets ever 
Going um, back to going, Chelsea. Going, going back to Chelsea. It's, well, for me, it's not. It's, it's, it's bad. It's a bad uh, comment for him. But but of course, Chelsea is going on. Chelsea is waxing stronger. We, sh we wish him the best in, in the Inter Milan. Inter Milan. All right, let's see how well that goes. I mean, um, you can see he's a king in Inter. Um, uh, before he went to Chelsea, he scored a lot of goals. I mean, ended the season as a top scorer in that club. So what maybe, stopped him from getting maybe, those goals at, <laughs> at, at Chelsea? Maybe some players are made for some clubs. Uh, I mean, you can ask Nicholas Bentner. <laughs> now let's not forget that Sam Lukaku is alone. <laughs> so I don't know after making this comment if, he's, if he has plans of coming back, <laughs> coming back to Chelsea. Well, of course, time will tell. Now, Lissandro Martinez has joined Manchester United from Ajax for a fee reported to be around fifty-two million pounds. I mean, in my opinion, looks like um, a little on the high side for him. But I mean, uh, looks like. Ten Hag uh, is getting his deal done. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think uh, for Manchester United, we've been having uh, all these complaints that they've been uh, less busy in the transfer market where you have uh, you know, teams like Arsenal, uh, Manchester City, Chelsea, really getting the job done. But uh, this is a very good one. Martinez is a very dependable uh, centre-back and uh, uh, we hope that. And also, he's, a, he's also a utility player. I heard he can also play, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the left full-back as well. So, it's a very good buy for Manchester United and we are happy that uh, the, the, the management are beginning to they are beginning to come up, they are beginning to listen to what the fans are saying because they don't want, they don't want any excuse uh, mm. for next season. Manchester United is a top club and uh, they are, they are, is, a, is a team that wins laurels almost all the time. So turning the team to a mere medical team for me is not uh, the best for the, uh, for the uh, Manchester for, United. And, and also, and also uh, Kule, I mean, Eric since to Manchester United, I have my reservation. I, I think at this point, United should be looking at the future, signing uh, Ericsson. He's got talent, but, but I mean... On a free transfer. It's, it's on a free, free transfer. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, when you have players, you have an opportunity. The coach, Ted Ang, must have seen uh, the player. Uh, Ericsson, for me, is a good one for Manchester United. All right, United. good one for Manchester United. Let's see how well that marriage uh, would go. Now, Zilichenko has officially joined Arsenal. And of course... Uh, all right, some Arsenal fans there dancing. Now, Chelsea signs Koulibaly and Kalidou Koulibaly from Napoli. Now, Napoli sometimes uh, I, I mean, sometimes can be very difficult to hold back a player that wants to move, especially to a club like Chelsea. And uh, for, for a club that wants to win the Scudetto, I, I think Koulibaly should have been very uh, pivotal to that um, dream. But, of course, when Chelsea come calling... It's very hard to say no. After allowing Insigne to go, you are you allow Kolebali to also go. Who is going to really coordinate that that midfield? Yeah, you, you need that maturity uh, you, you, in, in that team. But yeah, now don't forget, as a defense, you have a Kolebali to coordinate midfield. You have, a, I mean, in CA we understand age and all of that. Uh, contract also elapsed and all of that. But I mean, I think a Kolebali would have still been needed in that squad. But maybe the, maybe um, Napoli is looking at building a younger generation, a younger team. Uh, we hope uh, to see a better Napoli next year. But for me. I really want Victor Simen to move to a bigger club. Well, I, I don't know if that will happen at <laughs> this transfer window. It's absolutely but, unlikely, right? But Victor, uh, Victor Simen is, is still a young man, so let's see uh, what next season or the other holds for him. Now, Tottenham Hotspurs are stable £17 million for Memphis Depay, and then Barcelona wants to have um, a one on one discussion with the striker to find out if he really wants to stay in the club or go. Uh, Kule, time will not allow us to um, analyze that. But let's look at Fraser Price. Um, last weekend put up a very superlative performance. Now, a lot of people will say uh, at her age she's supposed to be uh, you know, taking a walk from the sport, but she's telling all those that care to listen, when it comes to 100 meter, I'm still the queen. That's my final whistle on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, my strike partner, Lakule Philip, um, was with me or who has been with me from the beginning of the program. I must say a very big thank you to you, Kule Philip. Yeah, always my pleasure to be here. All right. Now, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms currently displaying on your screen right now. And also, I want to say a special thank you to all those that have been sending us email um, to this email address that is currently on your screen right now. You can also write to us uh, if you haven't joined our mailing list. We'll be so glad to read from you. Now, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, it's Spot Pizza. Very importantly, to subscribe to our channel. I mean, um, in case you don't know, uh, some people here subscribe, they feel you have to pay, you know, 
it's absolutely free just click the subscribe button so you can get updates of every of our content my name is brownson Owana. thank you so much for watching the program today let's do it again next week until then please stay safe